the Time Bridge Newcastle, Safeguarding Adults, the Sage Gateshead, Middlesbrough Transporter Bridge, the Angel of the North, a group of people sit talking and signing. This guide aims to help people understand what safeguarding adults means and the protection available to those more vulnerable members of our society. Each area has a group of people whose job it is to safeguard vulnerable adults. This group is called a Safeguarding Adults Board and is made up of people from organisations like Adult Social Care, the Police and Health Services. Their job is to protect vulnerable adults from harm or abuse. A vulnerable adult or adult at risk is someone aged 18 or over, is eligible for community care services and who cannot protect themselves from harm. So, they might be an older person, somebody with a physical or a learning disability, they might be deaf, blind, or deaf and blind. They might have a drug or alcohol problem, they might have mental health needs, or they might be an unpaid carer. Most vulnerable adults, or adults at risk, live in safe, caring environments. But sadly, that's not always the case. The Safeguarding Adults team's job is to identify and prevent abuse to ensure that everyone can live safe, happy lives, free from harm, whilst making their own choices. Abuse is when someone does or says things that make somebody upset or frightened. Abuse can be in many forms, with some being more easy to spot than others. Sexual abuse could be making somebody do sexual things that they don't want to do, like touching or being made to touch someone else in an inappropriate way. A man approaches a girl from behind Sorry. and touches her. She reacts angrily. You looked upset. Sorry. Abusers may try to persuade their victims not to tell anyone. Physical abuse is possibly the easiest to recognise. He shakes Don't tell anyone! I'll make your life hell! Mean it! Ooh. Punching, hitting or grabbing a person, holding or tying down, or even giving too much medication are all types of physical abuse. You haven't seemed yourself at all recently, Sarah. Is everything all right? Emotional abuse may be shouting at somebody, calling them names, or making fun of their vulnerability. No, I'm not happy at the moment, but yeah, I'm fine. She's fine, she's fine. He leaves. Are you okay? Okay. She shakes her head. Or the person could give you the silent treatment. A letter is delivered. It is addressed to Sarah Brown. Financial abuse is when people steal money from you. This includes borrowing money and not returning it, and controlling your purse. They could also be running your financial affairs without fully explaining your financial situation. Oh, it's not important. I've got it. He leaves with a letter. Sarah looks frustrated. She shakes her head. Neglect is also a form of abuse. When somebody isn't given medical care, or the help they need to wash, eat or drink. This can sometimes be linked to institutional abuse. An old uh, man sits uh, at a table. Excuse me. A care worker passes. What's the problem, Jack? I'm not going to get in lunch today. I've been waiting an hour already. You can't have been waiting that long. But you know we're short-staffed, we're two staff down. I'll get you as soon as I can, OK? It's not as if you're going to starve, but I'll be back as soon as I can, Jack. She leaves. He shakes his head. Discriminatory abuse is when somebody's being abused because of who they are. For example, because of their disability, because of the clothes they wear, the colour of their skin, <laughs> or their age, sex, or religion. Institutional abuse is when the actions of an organisation cause distress. In Jack's room. Hi, Tina. Hi, Rick, you're on nights again. That's the third one this week. Lucky thing. Well, that's Jack's blood pressure done, sky high as usual. But we know it'll be all right in a couple of hours. I had a right, I'll go at lunchtime again. You know, sometimes I think he thinks I'm his personal slave. They leave. Have you seen the new rotors at the Parade Place? They're an absolute nightmare. If you believe you are being subjected to any abuse, or you suspect somebody you know is, please call your local safeguarding adults team and let them know. Hi, is that adult social care? Uh, it's about a friend of mine. I believe she's been abused by a carer. Could you tell me what to do? Unless they know it's happening, there's nothing they can do to help. Alerting the team of abuse will cause a safeguarding adults alert or referral. A safeguarding alert is, quite simply, an appropriate expression of concern about a vulnerable adult who may be being abused or neglected. 
and that can come from anywhere. It's vital that we're informed by anybody who has a concern so that we can respond appropriately. The alert triggers and starts a procedure which involves every agency and everybody involved who can and will do their utmost to ensure the safety and well-being of the vulnerable adult. Whenever we hear about a vulnerable adult who may be abused or neglected, we ask ourselves what do we need to do first to make sure that person is safe now. After that, we get together with people involved in the welfare of the vulnerable adult to decide how we can best investigate the allegation of abuse or neglect and also take further measures to keep the person safe. That's done through a process of meetings and through sensitive work with the vulnerable adult. The needs, the wishes and, and the thoughts of the vulnerable adult are always at the, the very centre of the whole process. For cases where it's decided that a safeguarding adults meeting does need to be held, this will be arranged by adult social care. If you're the person who has been abused, you might be invited to join the meeting and will be offered the opportunity to bring a family member, friend or advocate. Every safeguarding adults meeting has a chairperson. They will explain what is going to happen at the meeting and will answer any questions you might have. Thanks very much for coming today. Um, we'll start off with introductions and why we're here. They run the meeting and make sure you understand what is being discussed. You can discuss any concerns with the chairperson before or after the meeting. People who can help you will be invited to the meetings. This could be a social worker, the police, your carer, a doctor or a nurse, a housing officer or an advocate. If you need it, adult social care will provide a fully qualified and registered BSL interpreter of your choice at the meeting. You can say who you want to be at the meetings. If you want someone else to come to the meetings for you, that's fine. There will be an agenda. This is a plan of what will be talked about at the meeting. Would you like to tell us in your own words what has happened to you and how you're feeling about that, please? Um, David, um, I just don't like him. He's, 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 he's bullying me and also he's touching me as well and it's not appropriate. I, I don't like it, but I, I can't tell him to stop. I just can't. Everyone at the meeting will listen to you. You can talk about what happened to you. You can say how you feel about it now. You can say what you want to happen next. You can ask if you do not understand what is being said. There will be someone taking notes at the meeting. These are sometimes called minutes. Notes are taken so people remember what was talked about. Can we just talk about the sexual abuse? If you want us to, to look into that further with you. Um, I think I'd like to talk to Simone, if that's OK. Simone yeah, is a policewoman. So outside of this meeting, that would be an action then. You will meet up with Simone and talk to her about that. OK. Sometimes things are more difficult to deal with than others. This might mean we have to have more than one meeting. Remember that as soon as we know you may be unsafe, we will take action to make you safe. We won't wait until there's a meeting. Sometimes we might not be able to invite you to a meeting. This might be because we'll be talking about other people and we might not be able to discuss their private information with you. If you are not invited, we will always let you know what we are doing to protect you. We will always ask you what you think should be done to protect you. When we decide that you are safe, we will end safeguarding, but we will only make that decision jointly with you. The process ends only when we're sure that there's a, a very strong safeguarding plan in place, that uh, the vulnerable adult is safe, that all concerns have been responded to appropriately. What we would like to see in the North East is for vulnerable adults to live a life free of abuse, free from harm, and live a life as full and rewarding as is possible. If you'd like more information about safeguarding adults, you can visit the regional website which has links to the Safeguarding Adults pages for each area in the region. Project commissioned on behalf of North East Association of Directors of Adult Social Services, the logos of numerous companies are displayed. Closing credits.
produced by Dependable Productions.